This is called buffering. <clears throat> buffering is where we're taking the content and we're slowly putting it bit by bit out. Okay, so um, I'll start again. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Louis Lovett. Uh, you might know me as the IT infrastructure manager at um, Science and Technology from Middlesex University, which means I look after 300 plus desktop computers for you guys, as well as the Linux and Windows servers that you use to do some of your coursework. And then also, obviously, look at the researchers. But uh, today we're going to talk about a very simple topic called SEO. And as you can see, it's also SEO basics. I'm just covering the, the basics for you, but it's important to have a strong foundation. And that's why we're doing this guest lecture so early in the year, while you guys have only really started learning a little bit about creating websites. Um, outside the university, I do some consulting work, and you'll see my, I'm on Twitter, Louis in London, that's where I tweet about things. But let's get on with the lecture. If I'm on the right side. Okay, so maybe before we start, let's talk about why websites actually exist. You guys have any ideas? Why would you create a website? I'm glad you said that, because I agree with you there. It is about people, okay? It is to make it easy for people to find information. And the type of information that people would like from a website? Go ahead. Okay, so I'm, I'm narrowed it down very simply to what product and services they are offering, and contact details, right? Because if you have a toothache, you want to get a website of a dentist, preferably that's in your area, with contact details or way to get in contact to serve your needs. So, then what is SEO, and why are we talking about this? If the goal is to have a website that's easy for people to find, easy for people to get in contact, and there's information there that's relevant to their need, SEO comes in to help us fill that need. And the definition is really, it's adjustments that are made to your website, which makes it easier for search engines to crawl, to index, and to understand your content. So very simply, crawl is for them to actually, when they arrive on your website, to go through your information, okay? To index it is to make sense of what information is written there by understanding it. And the ultimate goal is then, or my addition is, so that your content can be found and understood by humans and other systems. Does that make sense? Yeah? And there's a source on the Google Webmasters tools. So, if we know what SEO is, why do we do SEO? Okay, and this is, this is my definition, why we do SEO. Simply because designing a beautiful website is not marketing. Okay, if you just create a beautiful website, but you don't make it easy for people to find it, don't make it easy for search engines to find and present that information to customers, it's equivalent to having a beautiful, beautifully made portfolio or thousand business cards, but have it locked in your drawer, right? Just by creating a website doesn't mean that you or your client's business will get more customers. Without SEO and marketing, the website is equivalent to having business cards, but keep them in your cupboard. So what I always propose is if you take good design, combine that with search engine optimization, and combine that with normal marketing, you'll get new business and you'll also get loyal customers. So the first thing you really should do, now that we know what SEO is, we know why it is, we should then find out, so if search engines want to index a, a website and present it to someone searching for a certain need, um, maybe we should first determine what our goals are. Okay, so first find out what people need. Okay, if I'm a dentist and I'm in Angel or in Islington, would it be useful for me to talk about the fact that I used to be in South Africa? No, because, well, maybe on my about page, but definitely not on the first page. It says South African dentist, unless you're specifically marketing for people who want to get South African dentist. So first is to find out what your market wants, okay? 
because you want to rank in high, you want to rank very high in the search engines. Another thing you want to do is you want to drive traffic to your website, so that could be one of your goals. And another goal could be you want to increase the conversions. Okay, so you want to get more out of the people that are already visiting your website. So the demo that I'm going to show you today is one that I created a while a couple of years ago actually. And this just shows you a, a search result. So we search for the term air print printer list. And over here you can see the results that you get. This also constantly changes. But there's a couple of things to point out. One is you can see the title, okay? And that title is, um, in this case, air print printers. You get the URL, which is the full length website plus the end. So if, if your website is my domain or mywebsite.com forward slash my special article about printers, then the URL is that full length. Then the domain itself, is just uh, up to the .com or .net or .co.uk. So now that you know this is the way that it gets presented, you can start designing your website in a certain way to be able to provide this. So there's different ways that you can actually get your website in front of customers through search engines. And this is an example of where I search for garden sheds. And it brings up quite a lot of different things. One is you can see the first bit is paid advertising. So if you do have a budget for paid advertising with Google or with, um, with, with Microsoft, or to be honest with any one of the online advertisers, it's a very effective way, okay? But if you combine it with search engine optimization, you actually get even better results. So that is the first version, but it costs you, cost you money. The second way that you can get search indexed in search engines is by the Google Places. And as you will see, I'll, I'll show you a little bit more about that. But what we're going to be focusing on today, so Google Places is great if you are a company with a physical address, okay? Um, or it's like I said, with a dentist, you know, or a hairdresser, that's really good. But what we're going to be focusing on is what is called the organic results. In a page like this, you can see there's actually only two, but sometimes you don't get any local results. You only get a small amount of paid results. So we're going to, our goal is to get your website shown over here because the number one and number two position is really what people click on. Those are the websites that people go to. So we know what SEO is. We know why we're doing SEO. Okay, and we have kind of a goal of where we want to be. So there's a couple of things we need to consider of what we need to do to our website. Like you remember I said these are small adjustments you can do to your website to make it easier for search engines to find it. And here are some of the factors. Okay. You can see that the trust or the authority of your website is important. Okay, so for instance, if an article appears on the BBC, we all agree that it, it's, it's going to be of quality because there's editors, there's people that reviewed it, and then good standing. The link popularity, that is how many people are actually linking to that particular website or to that particular article. Then there's also something called anchor text for external links. Or oh, sorry, anchor text of the external links. What this means is if you write an article, if you have a website about um, mobile phone covers, okay, and it's special, let's say, you know, Middlesex University, we created a cover a couple of years ago made of bamboo, so a bamboo iPhone cover. If you have a lot of articles, a lot of people writing about the bamboo cover and using the words bamboo cover when they link to the website, that gives an indication to the search engines that that the destination of that link is most likely going to be about bamboo iPhone covers. Does that make sense? Yeah. Then other things is uh, you know, the traffic, the click-through rate, so how many times it's presented to people and they're actually clicking through to it. But what's important here is different search engines do have different results or different guidelines. 
and the guidelines also change. So this is from 2009. Okay. So again, what we're going to be focusing on are the factors that don't really change that much. Okay. And these are the things that you have 100% control of, and that is the quality of your content okay, and the search engine optimization of your content. We call it on-page SEO. I showed you 2009. Now let's have a look at 2013. These are September statistics or September um, factors. So you can see there's a couple of things that have changed. One is social metrics have become much more important. So your social metrics are all people talking about your website on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, uh, depending on what your website is about. But again, as I said, these things change they go up and down but the one thing that's almost always con constant is that quality of content is important and that on page SEO in other words the keywords that you use on your website that is very important so you can see over here that in the 2009 keywords was about 15 percent and now in 2015 sorry 2014 keywords are still 50 percent but then there's also other things that are very important, which is the content length, how long your articles are, the readability of your articles, the quality of your articles, the speed of your website. Okay. So does this make sense to everyone so far? Yes. Okay. So how do we do this? There's two types of ways to do SEO. We're going to focus again on the on page, but so you have a better idea of two sides, I'm going to compare the two. We have on-site SEO, which is the creating and optimizing of your content so that your the search engines can find it, they can crawl it. It's also things like your website structure, the file names on your website, and then the design. I'm talking there a little bit more about the technical design and how it looks. Let's quickly speak about file names, okay? One very good example of this is when you take pictures with your digital phone, okay, with your smartphone, and you would like to use those pictures on your website, even if you took them with a very expensive camera, do you know, who, who can tell me what the name of that file is after you drag it onto your computer? Okay, yeah, so it ends with a JPEG, but it's usually something weird like DCM yeah. underscore 57572. Yeah, so if I ask... Picture. Exactly. So if I ask you, what does that mean? If I have a file on the website and it's called DCM57577, does that mean anything to us? No. Do you think it'll mean anything to a computer? No. <laughs> so naming your files makes a lot of sense. Instead, if you named that file Cute Kitty, and your website is about cute kittens, then someone searching for a picture of cute kittens will probably be able to find it. Make sense? Right, so when it comes to the website design, we're talking about using things like cascading style sheets instead of using Adobe Flash. On the off-site SEO, these, this is more referred to really as search engine marketing. Okay, but there's still aspects of, um, of, of, of normal SEO. And these are the strategies for SEO that are not done on your website. These are done on other places around the internet. So, like I said, social media is becoming much bigger. So this is how active you are or how active your customers are talking about your topic or your website on social media. It's also about if you are a tech, you know, if you have a, a local offline business, or is that business registered in other online directories? Okay, so these are things that you do to, to help your website, but you're not doing it on your website, you're doing it elsewhere. Okay, and again, if you are adding your website to an online directory or talking about on social media, if your website is about an iPhone cover, then speak about iPhone covers. Make sense? Okay. But what's important is you have to do both online, uh, on-page SEO and off-page SEO, as well as social interaction um, to have a successful online website. So, we're going to ignore off-page for now, just focus on on-page. This is an example of the listing. 
that people found. First one, we had the title. So there's so many websites that come up as untitled, okay, or they have no title at all. The second thing is we had the domain name. So if you're if you create a brand new product which is you know purple widgets on ice because it's a new widget that makes ice purple, then it makes sense to call it the purple widget for ice, right? It's not only easy for people to remember, but it's also easy for systems. So you spoke about the URL. So when I speak, when, when I'll quickly go into this again. If you're creating a new page, don't call the page hello, okay? Um, or name the page based on what the content is going to be about. Almost treat it like a second title. So for instance, a good, what's a good example for about page? What could we call that? Maybe something like about.html? Make sense? Or a contact page, we could call it contact. Or if you have something about blue, or sorry, purple ice widgets, you can call it purple ice widgets.html. The next thing is the description. We'll cover that a bit more, but if you provide a meta description, it will actually show up in the search engine listings. This is not 100% given. Google might decide to use another part of your website. Okay, headers. These aren't used that much more, but I'll show you them in any case. So, front page SEO, as I said, it's about content. It's about um, your structure or your markup, which we look at. And one of the things about markup is alt tags, which I'll cover more. Okay. Again, this is an example. We search for a certain word. Those are the words that appeared in the results. Okay. And when we clicked on it, that is how the website ended up looking. Now that you know kind of what you should do, okay, and I'm going to kind of remind me to, to, to cover alt tags for images, but this is what you should not do. This is bad on page SEO. Titles like welcome to our website or new page one. Because really, what does it tell? What, what does that say? It doesn't say tell you anything about the website. 2009, I take the screenshot. If you search for new page one, you had 2.2 billion results. So there's 2.2 billion irrelevant pages on the internet. Although this one is about fabric land and swimwear, apparently. Except it's called page, new page one. Sorry, fabric land. Um, good on page SEO instead is using title tags. That's how you use the title tags. Have you, how far have you gotten to creating websites? Have you created the basic page so far? Okay. So how many of you started with a title tag in the header? You, everyone did. Okay, good. You're being taught well. Just checking. And again, the reason for that is it shows up in the title and also it shows up as the title for the results. Okay. Have you used headings yet? Okay. And why do you use headings? Okay. Because it, well, for one, it could actually look nicer. Okay. Two is you are giving it explicit or semantic um, value. Okay. So if something is a heading of a page, it means it is this page is about that heading. Okay. And you can then later on, if you have all your different pages using the, a heading, you can go and make them all look different by just changing how a header or a header one should look across your whole website. Okay. Other things you can do is provide or add emphasis to certain words. So if you have a very long article, it's not only nice for people to quickly see. Okay, let me explain again. If you have a very long article and at the one point you are talking about your service, you have your headers, um, but you'd also like to, to emphasize a specific part of the text, you can put it within tags like EM or strong. That will, well, by default, it'll make it dark, okay, bold, but it'll also tell search engines that you're trying to put emphasis on that specific piece of text. Like I said, for humans, we will actually see it as bold and our eyes will follow it. So it'll draw attention to us as well. So example over here, 
it doesn't show that well, but we have the title, sorry, we have the title tag, we have the heading, we have the heading two, sorry, that's actually, yeah, heading one, heading two, and then these are ones that are folded, okay, they are, the, some emphasis has been put onto it. Something else that's important is the categories you'll see on the side, okay, they talk about specific things, so this is doing air printing windows, so if you're going to click on that link, to what type of content do you think it will take you? Do you think it will take you to content about how to do air prints in Windows? Yeah. Okay. And then lastly is the image alt text. So have you used alt text yet? Yeah. Yeah, good. All right. And the reason for that is it shows, there's, there's two things about it. One, it tells the search engines what this image actually is. So in our case, this is the HP PhotoSmart Plus E, which I was luckily smart enough to also, well, plus one, I followed the procedure to name that file HP PhotoSmart Plus E. So not only named the file, but also gave the correct alt text. And the third thing that we often forget is not everyone is, is, um, is visually enabled, okay? Not all of us have got great eyes. Some people have very bad eyes. Okay, so you get online screen readers that can read the page for you, and when it gets to that picture, it will say picture of an AirPrint printer HP PhotoSmart Plus E. Not only that, is as you know, we are moving away from just normal computers. Okay, your iPhone is a computer, your Android tablet is a computer, your fridge is a computer. So by defining exactly what these things are, it makes it easier later on for these other devices to present your content. Okay, the anchor tag. I'll show some of that examples of bad SEO. I've always found, you know, people, when they just show you what to do well, you might learn that, but it's a very good idea to learn from other people's mistakes. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. So I've got lots of mistakes. Just come and look at me. You can learn a lot. Um, one is to start your website. or on, you, have, you should really start your website with the index.html if it's a static website, or index.php if it is uh, non-static, it's a dynamic website. But a lot of times you get people that start the website with the first, so I'm talking about their home page, the landing page, that call it welcome.html. So what do you name it? Index.html. Okay, so, that's a good, so the question is, you, you, you want to know why. The reason why you call it this is, the web servers are configured in a certain way to say if there is, if you have 20 files in there and one of them is called index.html or default.html, default.php or index.php, it will treat that as the main home page. Make sense? If you did not put an index.html, it wouldn't know which one is the first home page. So instead of showing the page, it will either show you one of two things. One, it will say, sorry, you're not allowed to to see the contents of this folder, or if your website is configured another way, it will just show you all the files. Okay, and, and I'll, after the video, I'll show you a example of that. People who have websites which is about wedding cake photography, but they do not have alt, in the, alt you know, alternative text for the images. Okay, if people don't use headers, so if your content is just one long piece of text, Firstly, for people, it's not easy to read, especially if you're writing for the web, you're not writing the same way as you would write a novel. Okay, on the web, we don't read every single word, we scan. So we go and we kind of read in blocks and we want to get, so put your important things early, put emphasis on parts that you want people to see, use lots of images, give it alt text. Okay? And bad SEO is also plagiarizing text. I've seen this a lot where people think, oh, you know, they like that website. They'll just copy the text and put it on their website, name it a different website. Can you do it? Yes, you can do it. Is it effective? No. Why is it not effective? Because the search engines have, sorry? When is someone want to say? It's not your own. Yeah, so that's one thing. You're not authentic. But secondly, the search engines have already seen this content. So they've already, you guys use Turnitin, right? Oh, you, maybe you haven't yet, but I know the lecturers do. Okay. So if you plagiarize someone else's content, the system will say, no, sorry, someone else did it, and you'll get zero. Very simple. 
search engines work in the same way. They won't not index your website. They will, they just won't give it much value because it's already been set elsewhere. So instead, if your website or if your service is very similar to someone else, then you can use that, you know, you can use their website for inspiration, but go and write it in your own voice, in your own way, and in your own style. Okay, another mistake that some people do is they have no links to other pages. So you arrive on a certain page on the website and you can't go to the other pages. That's why it's important to have a, a, a menu system across all your pages that's easy for people to get to. The only time you would like to do this where someone arrives on a web page and there's nowhere else for them to go is we call it a squeeze page or lead generation page where you only want that person to do one action on that page. Okay? So then you remove the menus. You remove everything because all you want is, so the example is if you do an invitation for, for party and you're doing it on your website, then make one page that doesn't have the menus because the only thing you want that person to do on that page is say yes or no. Make that make sense? Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, also, don't leave broken links on your site. Okay. This is more of an advanced topic later on where you can use some software to find all the broken links and go and fix it. Okay, or you can actually configure, is, uh, there's files on your web server that you can configure to say that if someone hits a, a, a broken link, okay, which means a link that takes them to nowhere, instead of just showing, you know, error 404, it will instead take it to a 404 page, a special page that you created which said, oh, sorry, you know what, we can't find the file that you were looking for, but here's alternatives. That way you don't lose the traffic and um, people generally stay on your website. Okay, another thing you shouldn't do is use strange characters in your file names. So these are things like spaces. I know people don't think spaces are strange, but um, they are, and I'll show you. So we'll quickly talk about the, the strange characters. So if you have a space in your file name, when it gets on the internet, it's mostly on Linux servers. Okay? And that space needs to be changed into a URL encoded format. Okay, so Maybe you guys, you would have received email in the past, right? And you might have seen these things, percentage 20 percentage. Have you seen that before? Yeah. Okay. So um, firstly, it looks ugly in emails. Secondly, if I had to send you to my Blue Widget website, bluewidget.com forward slash about percentage 20 percentage us dot HTML, that just doesn't work, right? Yeah. So instead of that, if you do want to have multiple word URLs, they just put hyphens in between or dashes. Okay, another thing is um, in, when you start out, you can have a cheap post, but when your website starts getting traffic, you really need to be on a fast and a good post. Another thing is another thing that might slow you down your website a lot is actually just not optimizing your images, your pictures. So we said earlier you would take your you, you take a really nice picture with a SLR camera or even with your, your digital camera, then you would rename the file, right? Okay. And secondly, go and open it up in a photo editing tool of your choice. Then you go and save it for the web. So there's a couple of things here. One, if you know on your website you would like to have the image exactly the size, then a good thing for you to do is go and scale it make it that size in on your computer before you put it on the internet. Because if you kept it in the full size, the web server or the website, uh, sorry, the web browser is smart enough to scale it down, but it first has to go and get this very big file from the internet before doing it. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, and another thing you shouldn't do is you shouldn't participate in what they call link farms. So this is where you just, um, it's basically like spam. I'm not even really going to cover it. But it's where you exchange, oh, you know, I'll link to you and you and you and you and you, as, and then you guys will link, or those five people will link back to you. But it is, it's, it's, um, it doesn't work anymore. Right. So did, did that cover on-page SEO? Yeah? I'll quickly speak about some off-page SEO factors, which I really more refer to as promotion because these are things that you're doing off your website. So by essence, it's promoting your website. 
the fact is here are the amount of places not on your website linking back to you. The amount of links that you're actually getting, not only to your domain, not only to your website, but the specific page. So let's say you have a website about gadgets, but you have one specific page about the, um, the digital board wiper. Okay? Then it is the amount of links that's specifically to that page, not to the website. Again, the anchor text, videos linking to your website. So we found recently, well not recently, the last couple of years, if you have a lot of YouTube videos, or if people are making YouTube videos and inside the video, underneath the video there's a link to your website, that's a very good quality link, especially if people are watching the whole video. Make sense? Online directories, social media networks. So nowadays it is just, it's almost a given if you have a website to have a social media property, so to have your Twitter account, to have a Facebook account. Sometimes you can choose which one, because not all niches really require. Um, but even I've seen, I've seen really nice work done, even in the financial markets, for instance, or for lawyers, people that are generally, they have to be very careful about what they say in social media. There's still really nice ways that you can promote on social media. Um, and it's generally just sharing. So if you already have a website, Let's say you have a website with 20 pages. There's already 20 things you can share. Make sense? Okay. Then also, not only your website, but someone else's website, which is similar to you, but not your competition. Do you think people that follow you would find it useful to see that content? Of course they would. So there's another 20 things you can share. Then there's news articles about your industry, which you can share. And with all those sharing, is you're actually helping your customer make better informed decisions they get more information and they will actually thank you. So you're giving them things for free via social media all the time. They will thank you either by sharing your website with other people or becoming a customer. So this was a tool, Site Explorer, unfortunately not valid anymore, but there are online tools still that you can see what websites are linking to your website. Okay, and as I said, from 2012 upwards, you actually have, if a lot of bad, bad websites, in other words, websites that was actually only created for SEO purposes, there were no real content on it, it's like spam farms, if a lot of those people were linking to your website for a long period of time, then you'd also get penalized. So, again, just some things that you can think of, okay, the very basics of off-page SEO is using the anchor text. So if you're promoting your page about the bamboo iPhone cover, then go and put a link in. So, so you're on some forum and people are talking about bamboo, all the different things that bamboo can be used for. In that forum, you've registered and you're reading all kinds of nice information and then at the one point you say, hey, but have you seen my webpage about the bamboo phone? Use the anchor text bamboo iPhone cover. Okay, for static web pages, okay, you can also add your static web page manually to Google. Um, for dynamic web pages, a lot of times now with the content management systems, they have it built in. So you focus on making great quality content and a nice looking website, easy to use website, and it'll be added, well, Google will be informed that it exists. If you have a static web website, like you guys are doing at the moment, no one will know about it unless you go and tell them. Yeah? So this is called submitting your website to the search engines. You can also create a site map. So a site map, again, if you're using content management systems like WordPress or Drupal or, you know, Razor CMS, I think, does as well, it will generate a file for you, which is a list of all the pages that are currently on your website. Okay? And search engines will actually use that file to say, okay, great. So, oh, we see you've added two more pages to your website. Let's go and read that. Search engine goes and read it, goes and puts it into their database. If someone looks for something specific to that web page, they try to present it. But if you're static websites, again, this is some tools you can use. Now, I said how important, and you even saw how important social media is now for your website. So, 
the one side you can do is promote your website through social media, but you're only one person. So really make it easy for people to promote or to share your website with their friends. Because it's better to have 5,000 people sending one link to someone else versus you trying to send 200 links to 200 people. Does that make sense? So you get all this type of plugins. You can just get people to like your page or share your page. Um, it also comes with some analytics. So one of my favorites is add this. Which you can add. You just get a little bit of snippets of code. You go and put it onto your page. Someone says, "Oh, I like this page. I want to share it with my friend." They click on it, and they're able to share it on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. Okay. I need some water. <laughs> a lot of talking, but it's all made sense so far, right? Yeah. Okay. So it's not rocket science, but you need to know where to start. So. Easiest is always start with doing keyword research. Okay? Because remember, we said we want to know what our customers are looking for. Because if we know what they're looking for, we can create the content, put that on our website, and then give them what they want. And this is one of the reasons. Imagine being able to find out whether people are looking for what you are offering before you spend days or months or years creating a website. Or something that no one ever even looks for, right? So there's a lot of nice tools. One is the Google Synonym tool, okay, or the Google keyword search tools. There's also some advanced tools that you can use. Um, one of my favorite is Market Samurai, and you just go and say, for instance, let's say with the um, the bamboo. Let's say you are you've just created this bamboo iPhone or mobile phone cover. And you want to see, does anyone actually search for bamboo products? So you'll start with a base keyword, for instance, um, bamboo design, okay, or bamboo products. And then you will get a list of all the bamboo products that people are actually searching for, right? So what it means is you could probably then go and, because no one's, if, especially if it's something brand new, no one's going to, at that point, search for your particular product. Don't worry. Most of the time you don't have something brand new. Most things. Um, but does that make sense? You start with a basic keyword, okay? So in this case, um, you start with, let's say you are a dentist in Islington or an angel, and you want to find out what are people searching for. So you type in dentist in Islington, you can do advanced options, for instance, well, I only want to find out what people who are in the UK, what they are searching for, um, and I am only interested in English language at the moment, okay? actually change that a bit um, and these are the results you'll get okay so people are searching for dentist in angel but uh, local searches 480 searches per month okay dentist london so dentist london you can see there's two 22,000 people searching for dentist in london but we know london is massive right so what when you're doing your keyword research, especially for local businesses, you can be ultra or hyper local. Okay, so you can target it to the postcode. You, know, you can target it to the street name even. Um, so it's much better in this case to optimize this website. Even though it's only 480 searches, if you're a dentist, can you? <laughs> if you get 480 new clients that month, that is ridiculous. Okay, they don't get 480 new clients. You don't need 480 new clients. And also, most of those people aren't actually necessarily clients. They might be just referrers. Okay, so that is that is the base keyword. The second thing you're looking for is something called long tail keywords. Yeah. And these are search phrases that are longer than four or five keywords. Okay, they always have lower um, search volume. For instance, when, if someone searches for something very specific, but what's important is they also have less competition, which makes it a much better chance for you to rank in the search engines. Often you will get things, for instance, if someone is searched, so example, if someone searches for window, okay, you'll get a thousands or a lot of a lot of uh, results, but it's not very specific. Whereas if someone searches for how do I install my window in my shed, 
right? That's a long term or a, a long tail search. And if you have a web page which is about sheds, where you show people exactly how to install Windows in sheds and you even offer it as a service, is it likely that you will show up? Yeah. Another piece of advice is you can actually go to think places like Yahoo Answers and you can see what people are searching for. Because if you know what your clients and your customers, or sometimes in your case, your designers, uh, your clients' customers want, you can present it to them. And then there's also, again, advanced tools like Market Samurai, which allows you to do some spying in a good way. Another thing you can do, use the Google Keyword Tools, use Google Insights or Trends. There you can see how, how, a certain, how, um, how certain things that people are searching for have increased or decreased over time. So you can see if you, if you see, oh, more and more people are searching for this particular thing, and I have the ability to provide it, you can create a page on your website, which is about that. Okay, and you can also set up Google Alerts. So um, Google Alerts is just a very nice way. You ask Google every time it finds out about a specific topic. So in this case, let's say, again, you were the bamboo creator, and you wanted to find just every time there's a new innovative or bamboo product, you type in the bamboo product, and every time Google finds a new website, it'll send it to you as an email um, or a news feed. Okay. So you've now taken your website, you've created the titles, the alt, you've made sure it's long articles, multiple paragraphs, um, easy to read, preferably also easy to read on mobile phones. So the next thing you can do is you can go and write articles. So there's all these different article um, uh, directories online where you can just go and write an article about a specific topic and at the end of the article or in the beginning you can link to your website. The nice thing about that is people sometimes need content for their websites and they are allowed to take your article and put it on their website as long as they keep the link back to your website. That's quite a nice trade-off, isn't it? So now you will get multiple people linking to your website. That's article marketing. Other one is building links. So this is just, again, submitting yourself to online directories. If there's other websites which is about your topic, you can even contact them and ask them if they want to list you as a supplier. Video marketing. Um, so at the moment we are doing YouTube, okay, or we're doing a Google Hangout. But doing a normal YouTube video is actually really just as easy, okay, especially now with our digital phones um, or our smartphones, it's become really easy to create a quick video. Uh, you can even take just multiple pictures that you have and run it into something like iMovie or on, on, on Windows there's a movie maker and you can use that as a video. You can use, there's two things you can do over here. One, when you put it on a website like YouTube, you're effectively putting another place where people can find you, right? But crucially, and something people miss sometimes is, when you put your video on YouTube and you embed it on your website, when someone visits, lands on your website, they see the video, they click it, they get into relaxed state, they pause, and they stay on your website. Okay, meaning there's opportunity then to have a create a conversation. You're having a conversation with the clients via video. They stand on your website. They find out more. It's very very effective. Okay, so spoke about online directories. Another thing you can do is go and blog or go do guest blog posts on other people's websites where you're talking about your area of expertise. Does that make sense? Okay, because especially if you can get into a, 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 another website, another blog that has a lot of visitors, you don't have to spend all that so much time trying to get visitors to your website. You can go somewhere where the crowd and the audience is and talk about it and people who read your article there, they'll end up on your website spoke about social media, and my favorite is really Twitter. I've had such great success with Twitter with some, some of my clients, and a lot of it, you can, um, you can schedule a lot of your content. So again, let's say you have a website about 20, okay, 20 pages on your website. You can go and schedule those to go and um, feed into your normal social media activity. Okay. Online press releases. 
And then again, depending on the type of um, area that your website is in, you can add it to classified sites um, or you can do paid advertising. And what's beneficial is at this point, if you already have a website that is well optimized, you will actually end up, in, in many times, you will end up paying a lot less for your paid advertising. Okay, so summary here is one, always start planning a website with the customer in mind. Okay, so this is the visitor, the person that's looking for it. Use properly formatted HTML and keywords in articles. Take your images. What should you do with images? Rename. Rename them. Optimize them. Resize them and optimize them. Uh, scale them. Scale them. Alt tags. Yeah. Okay. So you get, like I said, this just becomes best practice. You don't even think about it. You take it um, and it makes it a lot better. You need to be active on social media. I used to, in this slide, I used to say it's a necessity in some niches and beneficial in most. I've changed, I should change this to it's a necessity in some niches and beneficial in all. Because even if you have the most boring business, being active on social media gives makes you approachable and it gives people a way to get in contact with you instantly. For instance, with Twitter, someone can instantly ask you a question without knowing you and you can instantly reply. That's very, very powerful. Um, and the last part of the summary is when you do SEO correctly, the benefits are very simple. You'll get more visitors, okay, with the potential to getting more customers, and the general public will find your information and services faster. Okay, so um, so that's really it from me, guys. Okay, I see not all of you are asleep. Um, so if you want to, what I do is I. You can follow me on Twitter. On Twitter, I am Louis London, and um, what I do is I'll, I'll I usually I mostly post geeky things to be honest. But considering most of you will be geeks or are geeks in progress at the moment, um, you can go and follow me over there. And if you do find anything interesting online, whether it is about social media marketing, online marketing, websites, or even anything to do with computers or life or London or fun. Uh, feel free to reach out. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, I think the Google Hangout went well as well. I'm still live. So let me just stop that. Did you also find it useful seeing how to set up a Google Hangout? Yeah. Okay. Um, do it with permission. If you're doing it at home, you don't want someone barging in. Um, okay, so let's stop this.